Welcome to Bethany. Hello, I'm Pastor Joe, and I am glad that you can be with me on this Labor Day weekend. I hope and pray it's a, it's a good weekend for you, maybe some time off away from your regular duties and labor. I also hope that this message encourages your heart. There's a bold claim in the Bible that the Apostle John makes. It's incredible what he says. He's the most loved disciple. And we will discover today how that same title can be ours. Well, before we get into that, just a reminder, we encourage you always to go to our website, bethanyscofield.org, to find out what a next step in your life could be. In the, in the summer months here, while, while you would think maybe at a church things would be winding down, we've actually seen things flourish and grow. There's a men's study. There's actually two men's studies that are helping our men grow in their faith and, and, and develop. We have a new women's study that will be starting, starting very shortly in Revelations. We have things going on for our youth. Our youth ministry kicks off its, its regular Wednesday gatherings this Wednesday. And then our children's ministry always has things going on. We have small groups starting. There's a new prayer initiative. There's many things happening. We'd love to get you connected, not just to more activity. That's not the point. To get you connected to people in a vibrant relationship with Christ. That's what changes everything. Well, before we look into this week's message and, and uh, what uh, the Apostle John was talking about when he called himself the most loved disciple, let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for your word that gives us insight into living Lord, the Apostle John had some things sorted out and figured out. I pray we can be that way as well. Realizing where we stand with you changes everything. And we too can claim a title that might seem on, on the outward a little arrogant. But if it reflects who we are in you, that makes us in, in just a much better place. Lord, I pray for the people of Bethany going through challenge and difficulty. I pray especially for those facing cancer, like Kimmy and Catherine and Marsha and Len. Their challenge is great. I pray for their spouses and loved ones that are looking on and give them the strength they need and the peace required. Lord, I thank you so much for our children's ministry and how that's been vibrantly growing. I pray for Patty and her team that they would continue to reach our children. Lord, I thank you that we have studies for men and women to help them overcome addiction and problems. I pray that they will flourish and grow. For the Grief Share group, there's all these different connecting, connecting groups. Lord, may we not just gather for the sake of gathering, but rather to bring honor to your name. We thank you so much, Lord, for your word. Send your spirit in this moment, this place. Help us to grow through what we hear and see. In Jesus' name, amen. The first Monday in November is a special day. When I can make it, and I've made it the last few years, I go over to Bloomer, Wisconsin to Love Lodge number 37 for the annual Ludovisk dinner at Harm's Way. They shut the tavern down for regular customers, and instead, a group of mostly older men, I'd say the average age is maybe 70 plus, go in there and they have all the fixing for a feast. There's, there's potatoes, mashed potatoes and baby reds. There's side pork. There's lefsa. And the crowning, the crowning event is the lutefisk with drawn butter and salt that you can enjoy. Lutefisk is a Scandinavian specialty. It's, uh, what they do is they take a beautiful piece of cod and dehydrate it and infuse it with lye to bring it back to shape and then you pour butter and salt all over it and some people love it well every year I go there and it's a great time but part of what happens in that evening is they read minutes from last year's gathering and it's all made up stuff it's it's none of it is true it's just a bunch of jokes but the guy that gives us the 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 notes from last year has the title the grand exhausted rooster now, it's, it's tongue-in-cheek, it's meant to be funny, and for that occasion, it's probably the perfect title for T-Bone Bitney, the guy that always does it for us. 
But it causes me to think that unique title, Grand Exhausted Rooster, points to the title maybe I have. I'm dad. I'm husband. I'm a pastor. I'm coach. I'm a neighbor. I'm a friend. I'm all these things. But what would be my best title? What would be the best title for me to have? There's, a, there's by the way, there's a picture of me with someone from the from the last Ludafisk dinner. The Grand Exhausted Rooster was there and I was there. What is your title? And would we do well to grab one that John had? There's a verse I'd like to read, 1 John 3, 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. When John realized what Jesus did for him, there's only one title that he could take, the most loved disciple. He called himself the disciple that Jesus loved. Five times, if you read through the Gospel of John carefully, you'll see five times he called himself that. What was John getting to? What was this about? What was he being drawn to? We all have titles. All of us do. We're sons, we're daughters, we're Nana and Papa, we're auntie, we're teacher, master gardener, neighbor. But John was the loved disciple of Jesus. What audacity, what arrogance. How can someone say they're the loved disciple? That exclusivity and the greatness that he seemed to have. This is truly remarkable. It's bold. The Apostle John truly had a close and special relationship with Jesus. And as we look into it, we understand that's how we lived. Let's understand better. And by understanding better what it meant and what it, what it, what it was for John, it can change our lives as well. It's not just for John. Love disciple is our title as well. So let's talk about John's bold title. Five times in John, you can read, he claims that title, the, the loved disciple. John 13, 13, 19, 26, 20, verse 2, 21, verse 7, and verse 20. All of them, he claims that title. Now, to be fair, Jesus didn't call him that. Jesus gave him and his brother a different title. They were called Sons of Thunder. You can read about that in Mark 3, 17. And that probably came from their action. There's at least one story. It's in Luke 9, verse 54, where they were going by a Samaritan village and the Samaritans didn't welcome them. John had the perfect, James and John had the perfect solution for this. Call down fire from heaven. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that just solve our problems? And I, and I think in, in some ways I can relate more to sons of thunder than I can to the disciple that Jesus loved. I look around at my world, I see what's going on, and I say, dear Lord, can I just call down some thunder and lightning? Can I bring fire on people? It seems like the distribution of lightning, the distribution of fire is going to the wrong places right now. I can think of those that deserve it. I can think of those that deserve harm and hurt, and it doesn't always go that way. And that's how I think in my humanity. But John, later on in his life, moves away from that title, Sons of Thunder, of strength in himself, of what he could do, his personal characteristics. Instead, he was noting what Jesus thought of him. John 13, 23, one of those references uh, of where, what he called himself. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. John, with his, especially when he says it five times, is going somewhere with this. He knew something. He could look at the past. He look at his own actions. He could look at what happened. He could look at his own heart. And he knew something was different. Jesus saw something in him that he wanted for himself. And he strove out and get it. He was craving for something. He knew he needed something from Jesus, and he got it. He was the loved disciple. 
there's a certain richness that comes with confidence. Depending on what we're sure of ourselves in, we speak more fluidly about it, more confidently. We, we bring it out better. John understood his relationship with Christ. And so he called himself by that name. In some ways, is arrogance, is this arrogance, is this pride, or is he reflecting on a fact? I believe that's what he had. John's bold title refers to how John was loved. He knew it. He was close. He was invited. He understood what was going on between him and Christ. And so he knew he was loved. He knew Jesus' love beyond just those moments. He saw it in action. He was in the places where he saw Jesus' love poured out. Do you remember at the Last Supper, he said this, in John 13, verse 1, he talks about how Jesus showed them the full extent of his love at that Last Supper when he washed their feet. He was in the Garden of Gethsemane where tears or uh, sweat like blood was coming out of him. He could see the physical pain. He was at the trial, the unfair trial at Caiaphas' house. All these things he saw, he was at the cross. John saw Jesus' love in action. But he also knew Jesus for his truth. He heard him speak deep truth, deep love into his life. One moment, I think that was especially powerful. At the cross, you might remember this. He was at the cross with Mary, Jesus' mother. And Jesus spoke into him and said, John, I want you to take care of my mom. How powerful that must have been in his life. The people that Jesus cared about most, he was entrusting John with. I'm letting this out a little bit ahead of time, but if you think about it, doesn't Jesus do the same thing for us? Who does Jesus love? He loves the little children. He loves the alien and he loves the stranger. He loves his church. He loves all of the little children of the world. He loves you and me. And you, do you realize how he invites that world to be taken care of? He invites you and I. He is speaking into you and I and inviting us to be his instruments. That demonstrates and shows to me, I'm loved. I'm that loved disciple. John took a bold title because that's who he was. That was his description. The sequences in John point to that. Oh, that we could understand and know Jesus like John did. I would urge you, when you read through the Bible, don't read it like a textbook. Don't read it like a document to be studied, like some kind of academic exercise. Read it instead like, I know John meant it for us. This relationship that he had is the same one that we can have. This bold title he was taking, it was not based out of arrogance. It was based out of relationship. For three years of ministry, he walked alongside him. He saw what happened, and he couldn't help but be transformed. John is giving us a new perspective on Christ. So what exactly does this title mean? What does this, the disciple Jesus love, what does that exactly mean? I, I, I'll just be honest, I'm a little uncomfortable with love. That squishy, emotional feeling. I'm not real comfortable talking about that. When people, in, in my role, I end up in homes and in places where people talk about things like intimacy. They talk about things that are bringing great sadness. On Saturday, I was, I was at a park. Uh, I was at a park and I knew someone was going, I, I, I didn't plan this, it just happened. A person going through great personal tragedy happened to be there and I'm just talking to them and they broke down in tears in front of me and I'm like oh I don't know what to do I'm a pastor and I don't know what to do and yet this is what what this person said they said you're you, you're a pastor and you're one that cares I realized in that moment that title that I was carrying pastor was helping to minister. It really wasn't even about me anymore. It was about a connection that I could bring to them to Christ. The titles we carry help us bring who Jesus is into our world. 
and bring it about. John Settle refers to who he was and who Jesus is. And as we go deeper into this, we realize there's more than we could ever thought to it. Going back to 1 John, it says in John, 1 John 3.18, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. These words out of 1 John reflect what it means to have a relationship, a heart relationship with the Lord. He did what he could to show Jesus loved him. And in the end, Jen was not about the great things he did or had. It was rather about knowing Christ and how Jesus loved him. Do you remember the song, Jesus loves me, this I know? It was more than just cheesy lyrics. It's what John knew deep inside of his heart. Read 1 John 11 through 24. You'll see again and again, he refers to this love, love. But it's not this ushy and gushy emotional love that I don't feel personally comfortable around. It's something richer and deeper. And that emotional ushy gushy kind of goes away when we realize it's a meaningful relationship. And I don't mind talking about it. When I realize what it's about, when we realize what it's about to have this relationship with Christ, the the awkwardness goes away and we can begin to embrace and love our world like he did. Let's define what John's title. John's title, first of all, he shared his title. It's not exclusive. John, even though it's it's remarkable what he was giving to himself, he didn't keep it for himself. John 11 verse 5, we're told that Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. In John 13, 1, he tells us, John tells us that he loved all the disciples. And he loved them right to the very end. In John 15, 9, we're told that he loves all of us. And 15, 12, again. This goes way beyond John. This is sharing in this love for others. Next, to define his title, we understand that John built his resume on Jesus. This is the disciple. He gives credence to what John is writing. John understood what his title meant because he was right there with Jesus, invited him in to the Mount of Transfiguration, to the Garden of Gethsemane, to the Last Supper, to the cross. His title defined why he could share and bring to his world. And, and finally, this, gave, this title gave John his new, more significant identity. Certainly, John was an apostle, and he could have claimed that. He was the brother of James. He was a pastor. He was a writer of the gospel, but the title that he claimed, oh, means so much more. He was the one that this, he was the disciple that Jesus loved. How important is it to identify ourselves correctly with what matters most? And that's what John is doing for us. Finally, we can claim this bold title for ourselves. Let me read for you what Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all, that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. We can live in a new way. The definition that the world that someone gave you, I have no doubt that someone at some point gave you a title you didn't want. Fool. It, um late, uncaring. We've been given these titles or we feel these titles and they become what we identify with, but it doesn't have to be that way. Imagine what happens in our world if we took on a different title, the one that John claimed. How would that change how we see things? 1 John 3, 24 says this, The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know by the Spirit He gave us. When you begin to realize that God's Spirit is working in you, you start seeing things not by the way everyone in the world does, but instead by this book and by the Holy Spirit speaking. You realize, I can realize, we can realize together, we are the, we are the loved children of God. Let that sink in just for a moment. We can be different people. And it changes everything. So your bold, bold title. Let's be honest, where does it come from? Your, John fell short and so will you. That the bold place that we can, I'm, I'm the love disciple. 
doesn't come because I'm perfect. It because, it's because he chose me. That gives me a much more leverage and much more confidence, much more strength. It's not about me. It's about him. John's title followed a relationship, and so does ours. Why do we have strength in this relationship? Because it's based out of our relationship, not because of what we do. In this world, we are so tuned into, I do something so they'll do something for me. And honestly, that is how the world works. That is. And we have to, in some ways, abide by that in our world. But in God's world, it's different. It's based on relationship. Imagine a little child trying to earn his way to supper one night. Uh, now, maybe there will be discipline or maybe there are consequences for something that happens. But why do we feed our children? Why does a baby infant get 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 food? Why does a kindergartner deserve a, a bed at night? Because there's relationship. Why do we deserve anything from the Lord? Because we're his children. How much does he love his children? More than we can imagine. I'm the love disciple, and you can be too. And that leaves us with this. John's bold title can be ours. We can claim it for ourselves. John was so many things, but he knew what mattered. Where he stood with Jesus. We need to do that. And the next steps we might take will help us understand. I ask you, what is your defining title? Which title do you care that matters most to you? Pick a better one. The most loved disciple. Some things to think about. Some next steps in understanding this and applying it. How does Jesus' love frustrate you? I don't know about you. I see holes in Jesus' strategy. I see how the problem. People take advantage of people that love them. They don't appreciate what they have. Do you do you think God doesn't see that? Do you think Jesus doesn't know? He does, and he loves anyways. He sees something. Love compels in ways we can't imagine. And it's far richer and better. Does your relationship with Jesus need more action or truth? The biggest reason I think that we do not grasp that title for ourselves is we don't, we don't realize that we need to grow in our action or in, in the understanding Read God's word and know it and start practicing and living it out. If you would like God's love, Jesus' love for you to come alive, study his word and then act on it. Finally, what's your current title? If I were to ask you what you're about, what would you say your title is? I urge you replace it with a better one. Most loved disciple of Jesus. 1 John 3, 16 says this. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and he, we ought to lay our lives down for our brothers and sisters. We can become the loved disciples of God. Thursday night, I was out at People's Soccer Complex. The field marshal was out there, and he, we know each other by our first names, but he goes, oh, I, I, I shouldn't call you that. What should I call you? What's your title in front of the children? in front of the students I, I coach. And, you know, I, I didn't give the response I probably should have. I said, you can just have him call me coach, or you can call me coach. But how powerful would that be if our title became known as the loved child of God, the loved disciple of Jesus? How would that change our world? We can change it, starting with this identifying that as who we are not what somebody gave us what somebody else is doing but rather may we identify in our relationship with Christ when that becomes the most important part of our lives when that matters more than anything else our world can change God bless